There's two pine trees just to the right of the game trail from my perspective, maybe eight to 10 feet down the grade. And uh, they're maybe 20 feet tall. When it looks like that's where he's headed is to there. And when he got about, I guess close enough to where he reaches his hand out to grab that first pine tree, that's when I can see all the skin on the inside of his arm. 
and it, it took me a second. I can actually see the length of the arm and the size of the forearm. And I think that's when the size of this person really started to sink in. When he got, he grabs that tree and he pulls himself up beside it like this and squares up to me. That was, that was the moment I could feel all the blood drain from my face. Like the life was draining from my body. And he's looking, he's looking straight at me. And he starts to talk. Well, I think he's talking. It sounds like he's talking either to me or somebody around him. He starts to make this noise. And he shows his teeth like that. And sticks his tongue out like he's tasting the air. Strangest thing I'd ever seen. The first thing I had thought then was somebody's messing with me. Somebody's, this, this has got to be, this can't be real. Somebody's, somebody's playing a joke on me. They're about to get shot. It's, that was literally just for a split second. And he goes back to doing this. And I can, you can see the, the, the detail in the face. I can see everything. I can see he's 80 feet away. He's as close to me as you would play catch with someone. And I, just the facial movement. You see, this, is, this thing is real. He's this wide. I, I couldn't tell you how tall he was. He's standing down that great. He's over seven feet tall. He could have been nine feet tall, I don't know. But he was massive. Look at, think about a cow. Something the size of a cow standing up. Head, probably weighs 30 pounds. His head's pointed. He's got hair all over his body and it's hair. It's not fur. I can see the skin, the really, really dark gray skin up under in spots. It's really thick in areas and it's maybe five, six inches long on his body, two inches long on his head. And it's his hairline from here, just above his brow ridge is where the hairline started. There was no forehead that didn't have hair on it. And it came back to a point like this. And you can see that the little sprigs of hair off, maybe two inch long hair. Couldn't really see any ears. But after he did the, the thing with his teeth and, and stuck his tongue out, he goes back to talking again. Well, I'm sitting there freaking out. You know, I'm petrified. There's the boogeyman is standing right there and I, He's coming to get me, is what I'm thinking. So I, I get my, I have my hand, I'm, I'm still like this. I'm still leaned up against that tree. Well, I start to ease my hand down to grab the grip of, of the shotgun, just to get ready for whatever. And that really upset him. As soon as I started to make that movement, he had a hold of that tree and he did two side to side and whoa, like no. That went through me. It was like a wave of, of air and sound, like a pressure wave. And it hit me, and as soon as it hit me, it was like somebody scared the crap out of you. You know, you, you jump like this, and I jumped off. I took two steps out to the side. Now I'm out from under the tree, and I'm ready. I've, I'm on my gun. If he's coming, I'm going to get some shots off at him. Well, now I'm out from under the tree, and I can actually see now the top of the tree. He's got his hand on it, and it's... It's getting it. He wasn't shaking it. It was just shaking because he's moving back and forth and he has a hold of it. <clears throat> I can't see his hand really. He's got his left arm down to his side and the hair is covering all but just about his fingertips. And I can't see his right hand at all. He's got it wrapped around this tree. Uh, I believe it was a male. Um, I didn't really see any genitalia sticking out. I mean, I don't, there were no breasts. I believe that it was a male, just his extremely exaggerated features and the size. Um, once I came out and I'm standing there, you know, my heart's in my stomach and wrenching and my head feels like it's about to explode and which, and I get like this tunnel vision, like everything out here is heat, you know, and just, just my focus area, my focal point is, is what I'm seeing, which someone told me later was adrenaline. 
So, I mean, that made sense. But I'm standing there in my position, and I'm thinking if, if he comes at me, I've got three shots. High breast number four, turkey shots. I really don't think it's going to do anything to him. So when he comes, because I'm just convinced that these are my last moments and he's going to come after me, I can shoot him. It's an automatic three times as quick as I can in the head, run and reload at the same time. That was my that was my plan in my head, but I can't. I don't feel like I can move. I'm I'm stuck right there, petrified. And he goes right back to talking. Hey, wah, hey, wah, wah, wah. Oh, he'll do it long, mumble, and then he would do it again. And then he stopped. He took his hand off the tree. He turned his shoulders to the right, and he turned his head like this. Looked across his shoulder, down his nose, right at me. Never took his eyes off me. Took about two steps towards that game trail, smooth. Right through the thickest stuff you could imagine. He didn't get on the game trail. He was just off the game trail, turned away from me where I couldn't see him. I could see him a little bit, but not, I mean, I could see an outline and then he starts to walk away and I can see him a little bit and then I can't see him and I can see a little bit more of him and then he probably gets 100 feet down, walking directly away from me and he yells again, Waya! like a whip. Whoa! Uh, assuming now it's like, get the hell out of here, you know? But even then, I didn't. I stood right there. The woods are dead silent. Beautiful sunny day, March, very little wind, not a bird, not a cricket. It was dead quiet, understandably. And I'm looking, there's a thicket behind me. And I'm standing out and I'm looking over my shoulder and listening. I can't hear him walking away anymore. I can't hear, there's nothing. And I probably stood there for another couple minutes until I actually realized, okay, I'm breathing. Cause I'm breathing really, really hard and heavy. My heart's beating out of my chest. I turn around, I grab my bag, I put it over my shoulder. I left my chair, I left my calls. That stuff's probably still out there. I had my gun, I took three more shells out of my pocket and put them in my hand and I walked out. And as I'm walking out, I'm telling myself, that was a Bigfoot, that was a Bigfoot, that was a Bigfoot. And I'm shaking, my knees are shaking, and I'm, I'm petrified. I just know I'm not making it out. I have a half a mile to walk to my four-wheeler. Probably the longest walk of my life. And I can't remember a whole lot of that walk other than every now and then stopping abruptly to listen to see if anything's following me. You know, if something's following you, you stop. They'll take a couple more steps. You can hear it. I never heard any of that. When I finally got, I finally made it all, almost all the way out. There's a road that turns and goes up a hill. That's where my four-wheeler was sitting. Well, the bottom of that hill is probably about 200 feet from my four-wheeler. When I made that turn and I got, it's, it's starting to open up. I'm starting to feel a lot better about actually making it out. I stopped at the bottom of that hill and I turned around. And when I turned around, I heard like a huge tree, a fresh tree branch or a tree had just got broken in the woods. It sounded like a rifle going off. And that's when I turned around and ran, I actually ran to my four wheeler. I got on my four-wheeler, uh, I didn't want to put it in reverse and then back up, you know, not see what I was doing, but I had to. I backed it up, drove out, drove up to the house, I pushed the four-wheeler up beside the house, got in my truck, reached over in the back, I grabbed my 7mm Magnum, I loaded it, and I sat there for about five minutes. Uh, I didn't, I didn't really break down there, but I did on the way home. Was, I treated it for a long time. To me, it was, it was a near-death experience for me, not just seeing what I had seen. or it, it was the experience of I was going to die, and it wasn't really so much that I was going to die 
as it was, no one is ever going to know what happened to me. And uh, that was the last time I had ever been in the woods for almost exactly 10 years. I didn't go back in the woods. The way it, had, the way it affected me psychologically, it changed everything about who I was. It changed the way that I treated people. Because I can't say that I was the greatest person up until that point. Not that I'm a saint now, but I treat people with much more respect. I treat people a lot differently now than I used to. And when I started to actually realize that it was real, because I questioned the whole thing, you know, am I just crazy? And I, I did the research and obviously, you know, you snap back and reality is you realize this actually did happen to you. And, you know, I lived in town, so not, not that, that, that it mattered where I lived. I, I wouldn't go outside at night for a long time after that. I, could, I would lay in my bed at night and watch my closet door, wondering what in the hell is going to come out of it. You know, I'd, I'd just seen something that doesn't, that's not supposed to exist. Uh, what else is real? You know, that, that kind of thing. I sold all my guns. I sold my four-wheeler. Um, I've got tree stands that are probably still out there on that property. Um, and I went to researching Sasquatch, what I had seen, hoping that I could find the same thing, just so I could tell somebody. Because there was no way anyone was going to believe what I, what I, was, what I had seen in my mind. So I, I needed to find, I needed to find the same thing somewhere else, and I, I never found it. For the better part of nine years, I didn't find it until I watched the Crypto Reality Crew and what they were getting. The things that they were getting on camera was exactly what I had seen. 